Gee, gee willikers. Look at them. All in white smelly. Watch them, I call them. Hundreds of them. And all mom, every one of them was just one. Here. Gee, thanks, lady. But I had not to take it. I won't need it. I've just been telling Mr. Craftsman all about my cute little sister. Hello, little lady. Looks like there's going to be another beauty in the family. Some line he's got, isn't it, sis? Well, don't just stand there looking like you lost your best friend, Dopey. Come on in. Mother, did you ever go to church? What a question to ask me, Ziggy. And don't call me mother. Must have gone on and off half a dozen times with that psalm-singing father of yours, but it didn't take. I got my own religion, I guess, Ziggy. Live and let live. As far as I know, we're only here once, and I'm not going to miss a trick. Neither are you if I got anything to say about it. Quite a girl. I'll say. By the way, where's your kid sister tonight, Nat? Oh, she's asleep. How come you're drinking highballs? Oh, I don't like that mix. I'm very fond of mixed drinks. They're not quite so strong. Well, it's all right if you like it. Hey, Marion, are you still working at Van Oster's? Oh, no. I gave that job up weeks ago. Men may respect career girls, but they only send them books, not square cut emeralds. You expect too much from dames, Louie. If hey, they aren't cold, why do you send them to me? What's the matter you? I'm in love. In love? You're kidding, Lil. Don't you know the guy you're a man for always turns out to be the one that pays the lowest income tax? Not that you'll need makeup for a long time, but you might as well catch on to all the tricks. With your looks, baby, you'll never have to work for a living. If you watch your step. Yeah, you try. You ask me, 
name is Pendergast, I think it's all just too silly. Hasn't that detective at the store ever heard of a sorority initiation? The girls had to do what they were told to do, didn't they? You can't call that stealing. To drag Ziggy to jail over a dinky little lapel pin. And then for you to kick her out of school. Building up a thing like that, they have to give a girl a complex, Miss Pendergast. I don't mind telling you I'm furious. Dopey, I'm sore as a devil at you, honestly. I'm certainly not gonna let any dried up old maid talk about my daughter that way. Don't let her get your goat, Ziggy. In a couple of years, you'll be on your own. Gave you a workout, huh, baby? I can't get over this thing, Ed. I thought you'd go for it. Fool me completely in the taxi. Tell me, how do they make this junk stuff look so real? It won't always be junk, Ziggy. <laughs> Ed, please. Hey, what's this all about? The cab coming over, you weren't so particular. Goodbye, now. Goodbye? Well, a girl's gotta think a thing like this over. When you're around, I can't think. Well, you went for me in a big way. Sure, baby. Take your time. Nice going. Takes talent to put over the lines after you've played the act so many times. You have been listening. Next on the program, ladies and gentlemen, is that mastermind, Professor Who's it? Works completely in the dark. Sees nothing and knows all. Not all, but enough. Name is Ziggy. Angel eyes, or you'd never get away with it. Wrappings to match, and uh, cold as an igloo. Cigarette? Thanks. Just like I guessed. Good old Professor Who's it hits it right on the nose every time. Who's calling who cold as an igloo? You're not exactly a heat wave yourself. Who are you? Name of Denny Regan. Should that mean anything to me? Because it doesn't. It will in time. Oh, that type. And when I give out with the uh, gadgets, they aren't phony. Oh. Well, if you won't take Professor Hoosett's word for it, gaze deeply into his crystal ball. Neat trick, but why bother? Here's one little Irish boy from the bottom of the hill that grew up smart, like you. No neon signs, Ziggy. Get your father. From the first time you could push your snoot against a store window, you'd sell your soul for a sparkler like this. But when the day comes that you can buy one, you've learned that it's strictly corny. Diamond Jim Brady stuff. So, you split the difference. Yeah, and some night some sharp little blonde gets wise to the combination of that midget set. Not a chance. This isn't just to pretty myself up with angel eyes. If my luck turns, I've got something better than a soft shoulder to cry on. And for a rainy day, give me diamonds over dames every time. I almost forgot. I've got to see the vet about a sick wolf. See that this doesn't burn down the southern mansion, will you? Donnie, who's Denny Regan? Denny, did he show up? Where is he? I didn't say. I just asked who he was. Well, there are plenty of fancy rumors. They say he... Of course, nobody really knows. But Come on, Donnie, let's hope not... it. Well, I'll tell you later. Hey, Ben, about this Denny Regan, what's his racket? Ever hear of... Sorry, Ziggy, it was right on the tip of my tongue. Did you find out if he bites? Who? A sick wolf, remember? <laughs> there wasn't any answer. Ziggy, what do you do? No mystery about me. I'm temporarily at the Emporium in perfumes. Mmm, you smell like it. Why temporarily? The Brennan women, all two of us, are in the red right now. Mother's current boyfriend has a reluctant side to his nature. Where do you want to be parked? What do you mean? I'm on my way out. My, my, it's time we were all going. It must be 9.15 at least. I made another appointment before I stopped by here. Well, give my regards to the boys in the back room.
skinny. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Regan, I thought you'd be out jitterbugging. Stop. And stop in the middle of your next step. Faith, and why do you think I put that map there? So the wee birdies could pluck it to feather their nests? From the time you were so high to a busted hard handle, a devil of it of good it did me to scrub my floors. Ah, it is a stable you should be living in. What a fierce tigress it is. Mmm, corned beef and cabbage. For tomorrow. What time do we eat? You'll be coming, Denny. Try and keep me away. Mmm, it's heaven I'm in. Well, why I ever cook so much, the good saints only know. Now, uh, if you had a friend that you'd like to invite in for a bite, uh, some fair young creature... I uh, know, some fair young creature who would make me a good wife and teach me how to wipe me faith. You never give up, do you, Mom? No, Denny, I never give up. Hey. Where's the new furniture I told you to buy? I went to the store, but the things were much too elegant for here. Ah, oh, Mom, I've asked you a thousand times, why don't you move out of this dump? I can get you a nice place, you know, unit heat, an elevator, refrigerator, the whole works. Mm. Refrigerator, the whole works. That's all very lovely, Denny. But would it have this? <laughs> So you've lived here since I was knee-high to a grasshopper. Is that any reason why you can't pretty the place up? If the money I gave you wasn't enough, here's some more. Thank you, son. Tomorrow I'll be going to the store again. Themselves couldn't be better, Father, but. Uh... Is it Denny? When he was a wee lad in school, he wasn't so smart, Father. Just like all the others he was. And now he has so much money. The wholesale business, that's all he tells me. Perhaps you're unduly worried, ma'am. It's uneasy he is, Father. His eyes run from mine like twin hairs. You might pray for him a bit more. Don't worry, Mrs. Reed. Good morning, Father. Oh, good morning, Mrs. Novak. Good morning, Mrs. Lee. Uh, come right in. We had such a nice long chat Saturday night, I must have given you my address. Well, Professor Hooser knows all. If he doesn't, he finds out about it. Baby, what a stunning pin. Yeah. Looks like Ed's an old diehard. There was a sale on at the store. But you already have so many, Ziggy. She's got the funniest mania for lapel pins, Mr. Regan. Well, I'm for whipping up something. Well, yours be, Mr. R. Oh, thanks. I'll skip it. Ziggy? Same as usual, Nat, only very little water. I won't be long. Yeah, that's a pretty pin, all right. I'll bet the stores take quite a beating on stuff like that. Meaning? Well, it's not like a fur coat. The girl behind the counter probably knocks one of those off. Accidentally, of course, and it drops into a shoe. Having fallen arches, she wears such a large size she doesn't even know that it's there until she beats it for the bus. Or take a girl behind another counter. Perfume, that sort of goes with jewelry. She walks over to have a talk with her girlfriend, 
And a gadget like that could sort of stick to her sleeve, couldn't it? So, she walks out, goes home, and there it is. Much to her amazement. No, I wouldn't want to be the head of that department. It's too much grief. You're breaking my heart. I feel like crying for those poor little old stores. Ziggy, is there anything you wouldn't do for money? The stuff that buys a girl a mink coat, isn't it? <laughs> You're slipping, Professor Hoosett. If you think for a Ed minute... Ed and I aren't the same type. My boss could use you, Ziggy, and it'd be plenty worth your while. The uh, crystal ball says you ought to consider it. Hello? Mrs. Van Derwin? Yes? This is the Superbo Van and Storage Company calling. We understand that you've just bought a lovely new estate and expect to move any day now. Yes, but... Uh... I'm sure you've had several estimates on the job, but we feel it might be worth your while to have us. Well, I don't know if Mr. Van Derwin would... We could send a man over right away. After all, Mrs. Van Derwin, it costs you nothing. And if we could save you a substantial sum... Oh, very well. But don't come after four o'clock. I'm having guests. Don't worry, Mrs. Van Derwen. Our man will be there in 20 minutes. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Of course, you understand that we're not allowed to make a lower estimate than any other company. But there are certain little extras that Superba throws in, like uh, packing material, china insured against breakage, and little things like that. All in all, our service should save you about uh, $200. Why, John, that'll make it a lot less than the lead company won't. We have to get out by Monday. Can you make it then? We'll be on the job at 8 a.m. sharp. Now, do you mind if I look around and see how many vans it's going to take? Not at all. Thank you. Mm, nice young man, isn't he? Now, you're sure you have the new address correct? You bet, sir. But we'd appreciate it if you went on ahead, so as to be on hand to show us where to put the stuff. Oh, yes, we'll be there. They certainly should be here by now. Well, I hope they were careful with that striped settee. It's just been reupholstered. Mm. Better paint it white for the next job. And don't forget to change those license plates. Put that piece on top of it. What in the world could have happened to them? No, I haven't the slightest idea. Okay, Pete. Four more loads to come. this and tone down the frame. But there must have been an accident. We've been waiting here for hours. I just can't understand it. We've checked, and there hasn't been an accident. And there's no such company as Superbo Van and Storage. No such company? You're up against a new racket, lady. We may be able to get your furniture back for you, if we're lucky. Oh! <laughs>
no likey? He no likey Dotty. He gets dirty up, maybe yes. Very funny. <laughs> Dottie a ring and get her over here. This lovesick guy is putting a chill on the party. Hey, Berger, are you sure you told her to come to the birdcage? Oh, why don't you be calling her? my coin purse in another bag. Oh, well, that's too bad. If you've an important call to make, I mean, uh, if you wouldn't think I was trying to, you know, you know, oh, here, take it. Well, it, it is rather important. Otherwise, I wouldn't dream of imposing on you. Thank you. You might need another one. Well, that's why you waited. Huh? That's why I said I waited. Smudge on my nose? No. Skies in your eyes. Minnesota skies. Are they so different? Yeah. They're different, all right. Especially if you haven't seen them for a long time. What's your name? Bring an olive branch with you, Dottie? You don't mean somebody sore, poor little me. Look what I found. One and all, this is Mr. Mark Nielsen. Lately of Minnesota and more lately of the USN. Minnesota? Nielsen? You couldn't be a Swede by any chance, could you? No, I'm an American, miss. That's telling her, boy. Sit down, Nielsen. Have a drink with us. Thank you. Well, this is, this is mighty nice of you folks. I, uh, I thought I knew a fellow here in San Francisco. Well, I guess he shipped out on me. Give a look at that chest full of spinach, will you? Say, that's quite a watch you've got there. I never saw one like that before. Well, it's uh, just the strap that's different. I, I hammered it out of a shell case. Made it to fit a watch I had. You did a nice job. I wish they sold watches like that. I'd go for one myself. You should have that thing patented or something. It's stunning. Why, even for a girl in sport clothes, it's terrific. What on that little wrist? Diamonds would be more like it. Say, let's have a look at that. Yeah, sure. Hmm. You got quite an idea there, sailor. Say, Minnesota, do you just collect ribbons or can you dance too? Yeah, sure I can dance. Excuse me. place, Miss Brennan? What do you think? Joe's a romantic type. Well, show him this little token of esteem from me to you. Maybe that'll cheer him up. What did you feed the poor guy? The usual line or a Mickey Finn? I never had to use knockout drops yet. Say, where do you think you are? Back in high school stealing five and dime store stuff? Oh, pardon me if I'm a trifle confused. I seem to remember you're going for that thing in a big way. But the dumb Swede's going back to the South Pacific, isn't he? And he's proud of that gadget. Well, he could take his little hammer and pound out another little shell case, couldn't he? What about the watch? Well, what about it? It's not a very good one, but maybe he likes it. Maybe somebody gave it to him. Somebody special. Well, look who's talking. Little goody two-shoes. You're not really tight for once, are you? Yeah, that's it. I'm tight. Get it back to him. Suppose I don't know where he hangs out. You know. Get it back. <clears throat> Bring Betty 
see Officer Nielsen, will you please? Yes, ma'am. Never mind. You found it. Could be. It was under the table. I went back there to look this morning. I guess the clasp is broken. Anyway, I found it on the floor after you left. Well, you don't seem to be very happy about it. Well, I'm happy about it, all right. It's just that what makes me a little sick when I think I was careless with that. You see, my mom gave it to me. The watch, I mean. It's the last thing she ever did give me. You were just a little high sailor, that's all. Anyway, you've got it back. Oh, I, I sure was tight. You know, uh, I took your address down wrong. And your phone number, too. <laughs> I've been walking up and down all day trying to find you. You had a little celebration coming, didn't you? Well, I had now. And I got you back, too, haven't I? Come on, baby, we're going places. Hey, wait a minute. It happens I have a date, I'm sorry. Well, I know you have. With me. You see, I just remember that you promised me a date every night for the rest of my leave. Oh, I didn't think you meant it. Oh, when a Nielsen of Minnesota says a thing, he means it. Yeah, but I'm not dressed. Oh. None of the fancy dumps for us. We're gonna go down to this fisherman's wharf I've heard so much about. We'll eat that crack crab till we bust. And I'm gonna tell you about my folks, and you can tell me about yours. What's the matter? Listen, will you? It's not like I said about the watch. I knew you had one too many, and I got it off of you for a gag. A gag? Well, sort of a bet. I didn't know it had any special value. You know, you had me worried for a minute. I was afraid you were going to tell me you didn't like cracked crab. Must be quite a sight in peacetime. All those little blue boats coming in in the evening with their fish. Yes, it is. I thought you were going to tell me about your folks. Oh, there was only Mom. Maybe after the war I could come back here again with you and see that for myself. Maybe. What was she like? What? Your mom. Well, I've been told I'd take after her in looks anyway. I hope there isn't a limit to how many of these things they'll serve you. Oh, I don't mean just looks. I mean everything. Well, that's a tall order, baby. I don't think I'd know where to begin. Well, suppose she could be with us here, at this table. Would she like it, too? The little boats and everything? Yeah. Yeah, she would. She'd have sailed into one of these things, too. You see, Mom tackled everything with both fists, the way she did on the farm. You should have seen her driving a tractor through the fields. The wind was blowing her yellow hair and making her cheeks just as red as apples. Your mother drove a tractor? Yeah with me on her lap when I was little. Well, what about your father? Well, he died when I was four. A, a tractor? How could she? Well, you see, we couldn't afford a hired man, not for a long time. She did all the chores on the farm, the milking and everything, besides looking after the house and me. That's a new one. You've heard people talk about Big Swede. Well, that was my mom. Hey, what got me started on that? Sorry. I guess I'm the nosy type. Oh, don't be sorry. It sort of helps to talk about her. See, I, uh, well, I miss her a lot. You know, for all that she was so strong and hardened by work, well, when a fella got hurt, the way a kid will, well, then her, uh, then her big hands would be just as soft as velvet. If she thought you were trying to get away with anything, boy, not that Mom was one to preach, she wasn't. She just knew what was right and what was wrong. If you were going to tell her a lie, you know, just a little one, all she'd do is just look at you with those gray eyes of hers. And all she'd say would be, you better think again, son. Think again. <laughs> you know, you haven't eaten a thing. Let's get out of here. I don't get it. I thought you just didn't like the joint. I thought maybe you wanted to go someplace else. 
You said you wanted to see me after the war, didn't you? Sure I do. Well, this is just to show you the way in case you don't change your mind. Well, there now, you, you'll be all right. Now, you go right up to your room. Good night. <laughs> no, Freddy, don't go. Take me to my apartment. Oh, well, no, no, Nat, I have oh, to go. I'm a lady and you ought to no, show me I, my I, door. No, no, Nat. Come on, oh. Freddy. Well, if you insist, be careful now. There. There you are. Freddie, you know something? You're the nicest... You're the nicest man I ever knew. And that's right, Anna. You're nice, too. But I'm afraid I'm gonna lose you, Freddie. And I don't want to lose you. There, there, now, cheer up. You just had one too many little drinkies, that's all. If you were a girl oh. like me, absolutely unprotected, and nobody in the world would care what happened to you, you'd cry, too. Uh, I gotta go now, Nat, honest. Promised the boys I'd sit in on a poker game. And now you take a nice big aspirin. Don't want a nice big aspirin tablet. Want a nice big man. Want to put me on a pedestal and, and play gin rummy with me and, and look after my little investment. My little investment, Freddy. That's what's really got me down. They've all gone puffed. <laughs> Come on in and let me tell you. Oh, I, I can't, Nat. The boys will be sore. Now, look, maybe this will tide you over. Freddy! Be seeing you, old girl. Did you get it? What do you think? The big dope. He's so anxious to wiggle out of one that he doesn't know when he's been landed in another. <laughs> Well, I can always count on her. She really did her stuff for you. Who is that woman? That? That's my mom. You poor little kid. Don't, Mart. You saw her. That's why I brought you here to put you wise. You don't want any part of a dame like me. I didn't take your watch for a gag. I stole it. Don't you understand? I stole it. I'm not your type of girl, Mart. Don't you get it? I'm no good. Now will you get out of here? The only difference between you and me is you just didn't have my luck. Now, therefore, by reason of the power vested in me by the law of the state of California, I now pronounce you man and wife. Take it easy, baby. Take it easy. Goodbye, Mark. get it. Why Chicago all of a sudden? What's wrong with this end? You got no squawk about your cut. Besides, I need you here. You need somebody in Chicago, too. Okay, Regan. The racket out there is not big enough for the both of us. And don't try a double cross. What are you trying to be, a funny fat man? Taking that Brennan girl with you, I suppose. And cross her off the payroll. The guy in the South Pacific's got a contract with her. Wire me when you get to Chicago. Nice place, Chicago. But you're not going there, Regan. I'm sorry, Fatso. You might try jumping out the window. It's taken us quite a while to catch up with you boys, but we made it. Why Chicago? Why not? It's a nice place. I've been planning on going there ever since... Well, for some time. The wholesale business, Denny? Mm-mm. Something else. Well, glory be. Uh, I'll be pretty busy for some time, Mom, so if you don't hear from me, just don't 
Well, whatever it is, Denny, I'm glad it's not the wholesale business. I still don't understand. You said nothing about this when I saw you a week ago come Sunday. Well, it uh, wasn't said. Not then. It is now. For sure. But you'll be taken care of while I'm gone, Mom. And don't you worry about a thing. So long, Mom. Wait, Denny. On the train, they, they don't always have such good food. I'll be back in a minute in case Joe Carnation inquires. All right. Well, here's something. Officially is Martha. After your daddy. Post, you're supposed to kiss the bride and congratulate the groom, Ziggy, not vice versa. Matt, wasn't this sort of sudden? I'll see. Runs in the family, doesn't it? Freddy just wouldn't wait a minute longer. So we got the gang together, and here I go again. Well, good luck to both of you. Here, yeah, baby. Time for your bottle. No, thanks. Baby's not used to champagne anymore. Baby's bowled over. Give her a chance to get her hat off, will you? Ziggy. Nat, you startle me. What's the matter with you today? You could have made a pretense of taking a drink. I'm glad you lied Fred, Nat, if that's what you wanted. Brennan's neat dough, don't they? That magnificent fortune of 2,000 bucks that Nielsen gave you till after he gets back won't buy bacon for...
You aren't telling me. Is there anything abnormal about having a baby? Oh, happy, happy wedding day. When I think of the effort I've wasted on you. It was dumb enough here to marry this Middle Western skyrocket. If you'd stuck with Danny, the Waited middle... outside those iron gates, you mean? There are plenty of others like him. You'll see, burping a brat and washing diapers while the band plays around the corner. You're not geared for Ziggy, you'll go nuts. And how about me? Today a bride, tomorrow a grandmother. A gray hair to be seen, except where the henna's worn off. Why, you little... So sorry, Nat. Don't kid yourself, you won't be. But at least it's an excuse for you to get a place of your own. Nat, what do you mean? Why, the big take. Nielsen wanted you to get away from my contaminating influence from the first, and don't tell me different. Yes, but you remember you did need help with the rent. Not anymore. Besides, darling, a honeymoon couple and a burgeoning blossom cooked up in the same small flat. Nature's all very well, but not on the rampage. I should have cleared out of here weeks ago. I guess I've been marking time. Oh, well. I shouldn't have expected you to start knitting little booties. Sunshine, fresh air, a daily walk. Watch your diet, take your calcium, and keep happy. Mailman! Anything for me, Mrs. Merriman? Just another doctor's bill for the Willows. And for me, an ad for a post-war luxury yacht with twin-engine installation and remote controls. Did we get a letter? Rushing downstairs like this every morning when you both have a heart condition. <laughs> and that a postcard's gone for you in seven years, to my knowledge. Come, Unity. Well, if it is for Papa. Can I uh, see you for a minute, Ziggy? Sure, why not? Come on up. Good morning, Helen. Papa. Oh, she wanted to play around, Ms. Merriman. She could do better than that, but her looks. What's up, have a fight with Nat? No, it's not exactly that. Well, you better make it snappy if I know that landlady of mine. Ziggy, uh, I'm no good at this sort of thing, but Nat's got a hangover, and that's why she happened to open this. Tough to take, Ziggy. I don't know what to say. Ziggy, hey! Help somebody! Help! 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 After she is bathed, you must pat her dry and carefully watch the pores and creases. Then you anoint her with baby oil, and then you dust her all over with baby powder. That's what makes her smell so pretty. You'll go nuts! You'll go nuts! Very sweet. And you're good, too, like your daddy. And you know something? It won't be so awful long now before you'll be talking. And then we can tell each other funny stories and go places and... Well, you know, you'll be old before you know it, Button Nose. 
And so will I. Darling, get into bed. She's so sleepy. Yes, yeah, she's a sleepy girl. Hello? Oh, come in, Helen. Put your little arms in. Not to sleep yet? No, not yet. Oh, mine are, thank heaven. Oh, look at her. <laughs> Just like a little cherub. Yes. Yeah. Like the ones on the wall in the cocktail room at the birdcage. <sighs> oh, it's a shame. It's so hard to get help these days. If you had someone who could sit with Martha evenings once in a while. Oh, my insurance check wouldn't stretch far enough to pay her unless she was a midget. I know, sometimes it hardly seems worth it. Sweet as they are. Work and worry and pinch pennies to make ends meet. Watch yourself grow old before you've ever had a chance to be young. Hi, Helen. I'm home. Where are you? Uh, I'll be right there, honey. I guess I'm just tired. Well, I wouldn't really change places with any woman in the world. Sure. Makes a difference when you have somebody to say, Hi, Helen, I'm home. I'm sorry. I'll see you later, huh? Will you, for Pete's sake, honey, get some sleep and stop worrying? This is the first and last time you're going to look out for her kid. I'm sorry for her. She's just a girl. Well, she's been married and had a kid, hasn't she? Oh, Arthur. Having a man for two days isn't marriage. They never set up housekeeping together or worried about doctor bills. They never learn to put up with each other when they're tired and cross. She hasn't the strength or patience or whatever it is that comes with that. Kid was a widow before she was ever really a wife. Well, anyway, no more playing nurse girl for her. Well, look who we have with us. Well, Jamie, come over here and take my chair. Don't tell me all I've got on your nerves, Mama. I had a lunch, I'd find some familiar faces. Well, how about a drink, Ziggy? Same as usual. Same old Ziggy, good girl. Oh, she looks fine. Love your hat. We certainly missed you around here, Ziggy. Excuse 
Anything. Maybe she finds the company dull. Too bad Denny's still out of circulation. You didn't even miss me, did you, Button Nose? She still has Tuesday and Saturday night free. And she just loves babies. Don't you, Olive? Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Lady down the street said somebody here wanted a sitter. Guess we got the wrong place. Come on, Olive. No, wait. Could you be here Tuesday night at 8 o'clock? Yeah, sure. All right, I'll see you then. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> I call. Three aces. Why? left my coin purse in my other bag. Well, little lady, you've come to just the right doctor. Sorry, Doc, but I've already diagnosed that case. Well, as I live and breathe, Professor who's it? Hi, Angel Eyes. Surprise, surprise. When did you get back, Denny? You mean, when did I get out, don't you? A couple of hours ago. Good behavior, believe it or not. I've got a table over here. How about a drink? Well, I'll sit down with you. When did you get out, Ziggy? Oh, only recently. I went through the proper period of mourning, or almost. Well, haven't you heard? Well, I haven't been in a place where I'd get much news about the home front. The jet bomb really finished things for Martin and me, but quick. Oh, I'm sorry. Dreamy-eyed me. Did you get over it? Sometimes I have to get his picture out to remember what he looked like. How about it, Denny? I'll skip it. OK. You drink too much, Professor. Well, what now, Denny? What are you going to do with yourself? Oh, I'm just looking around, taking my time. I have a few bucks stashed. 
But this time, I think I'll go into something legitimate for the last, if nothing else. How's Matt? I wouldn't know. I don't see much of her since she kicked me out. That sister gag wouldn't work anymore, huh? Oh, she'd resigned herself to motherhood after 20 years. It was being a grandma she couldn't take. What? You wouldn't know about that either. Yeah, I went in for this domestic life in a big way. My baby's almost eight months old now. You have a baby? Well, don't die laughing. Boy or girl? Girl. Name of Martha. Otherwise known as Button Nose. Well. Hiya, Mom. <laughs> she looks like you, I hope. Oh, it wouldn't be nice of me to say. She's a glamour puss, Denny. I'll bet. Can't she walk yet? Well, not quite. But she can pull herself up to her feet. Won't be any time now before... Uh, you don't want that. Not now. Come on. But Denny, it's early. Yeah, but Button Nose eats early too, doesn't she? I'll drop you off and pick you up later for dinner. Right now, I have some important business to attend to. Oh, take it easy, Mom. I got a dinner date. Oh, so my young man is not a pig. So he's not so hungry and empty that he could eat a dozen dinners. <laughs> what do you mean, empty? Well, does a man get good corn, beef, and cabbage away from home? I'm not going to be away from home anymore. Praise be. He was a good father himself, told me that. Mrs. Reagan, he says, blessings be upon us, he says. Your son has learned a lesson. What do you mean, lesson? Well, not to be running here and there like a chicken with its head cut off. To stay where you belong. Not in that other place. Chicago. Well, Father Malloy's got something there. Denny. Yes, Mom. Is it the wholesale business you're after planning to go back into? No, oh, don't worry about that, Mom. That's not for me anymore. Denny! Another mouthful. Just a leaf of cabbage. And one little piece of bread. And one little piece of bread. Come here, Mom. Why don't you say what you mean? <laughs> the girl. Come on now, finish your dinner. Come on. You're just a piker. Couldn't you have found a really big orchid? Well, it's her first one, isn't it? Or has somebody been beating my time while I've been gone? Oh, Martha's hard to get. Yeah, like a mama, huh? You know, you're a dizzy little dame. Come on now. <laughs> one hey, more. Hey, wait a minute, you'll choke her. That's too much. Oh, not her. She's a pig. <laughs> Hey, when you go out nights, who do you leave her with? A sitter. What? Someone who comes in and sits with her. Oh, sort of a nurse, huh? Well, no, not exactly a nurse. You mean you go out and leave her with just anyone? Well, of course not. I have a perfectly reliable woman. She's had a lot of experience with babies. Look, suppose I meet you in about an hour at the St. Francis. I want to change my clothes and... Well, I wouldn't want anyone to come in and find you here. Okay. Oh. Well, so long, Button Nose. You know, <clears throat> hey, <laughs> there's one thing I like about you. You're very well groomed. <laughs> but definitely. <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. Uh, I brought a little something here. Uh, do you think she'll go for that? <laughs> Look, Button Nose, a necklace. Oh, with a real pearl in it. Why, you little hussy. <laughs> that button nose has got a soft racket. I have to add a pearl to that every week. You mean every year, don't you? No, every week. Do you want her to have a double chin before it's finished? Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh -huh. Well, you're starting pretty young, aren't you? <laughs> Come on, darling. Off to bed. <laughs> now, let me She on. don't like that one. Look how it is on Uncle Daddy. How's that, huh? Oh. Oh, look at your Uncle Denny you. with it on. <laughs> Just look at that, huh? Look at that around your Uncle Denny, huh? Come on, Rembrandt, make it snappy. Oh, now, just a minute, take it easy. This has got to be right. Baby. Oh, come on, sober size. Come on. Come on. Come on.
button nose, that's some crop you got there. <laughs> you remind me faintly of somebody in the comic strips. <laughs> Streetlights, they hurt my eyes. Let's take a quick run to the park. Well, okay, if it's only for a little while. I could do with the nightcap. I didn't mean corned beef. And that isn't all I don't get. Why don't you light someplace? I could do with the job in this deal you're going to work up, whatever it's going to be. What about Martha? What happens to her while you're carving a career for yourself? A kid needs a mother. You ought to know that. Right again, Professor Who's it? I need the dough, but it's fun to be with her. Even the work's fun. They're babbling Esperanto at me and pulling my hair. Come on, Denny, pay up and let's get out of here. Sorry, Olivet dumped Martha on you. I guess she had to leave. We haven't got your kid. Then what? Something's happened to Martha. What is it, Helen? What There's is no it? no call to wake up everybody in the house. Come in here. Martha's all right. She'll tell you. Where's my baby? She's safe, but no thanks to you. But where is she? The juvenile authorities came and took her someplace where she'd get decent care for a change. Juvenile authorities? But why did they come? Why did they take her? I know my Christian duty if you don't. I found her alone out of her crib with the bedclothes around her neck strangling. But she wasn't alone. Olivette was here. I never saw any Olivette. If I hadn't heard the child screaming and come up when I did, she'd be dead. And good riddance, no doubt, for you. Why, you won't yeah, you can say Wait a minute. Oh, she can't say things like that. Please, you're just making things worse. She could have kept Martha until I came home, couldn't she? Helen, why didn't you... Where did they take her? At least you can tell me that. To juvenile hall. That's what the woman said. Wait. You can't do anything tonight. But nobody can take your baby away from you. Nobody can do that. Or they'll be frightened. Why didn't you think of that before you started chasing around every night? Oh, Arthur. It was a nice woman who came with the police. Your baby's in good hands. But a change? Get her out of here. Get her out of here before I kill her. You heard her. And you saw her try to attack me. 
Come on, let's get out of here. Come on, and two. And the rest of the day to Mom, if you don't stop feeding me so much, I'm going to be sitting in my own lap. The first time in months you'd slept in your old bed, Dinny. Huh. It was awful late when you come in. And what were you doing up at that time of night? I was knitting. What were you doing? Mom. <laughs> I was eating corned beef, and who should I think of right away but you? Say, Mom. Are you putting out with the corned beef on Sunday uh, so much that if I just might want to bring somebody home? Oh, Denny, I wish you would. I'll see if that can't be arranged. Friend Manor. This is Mr. Regan. Anybody call me? Mrs. Nielsen has been trying to reach you, Mr. Regan. You ought to get in touch with her mother. It's urgent. Okay. The baby's a juvenile hall and they got Ziggy down in the jail. She's nearly crazy. What can we do, Denny? We gotta fix it some way. Hello? Hello, Mom. I'm sorry, but we'll have to forget about Sunday. But what happened? Tell you later. Goodbye, Mom. You only gave me six cards. Okay, take another one. Oh. <laughs> a girl's got to have some fun, don't she? Or go nuts? What are we supposed to do while a little angel sleep ten hours every night? Sit on her hands? Mine are plenty old enough to get up and run if the house caught on fire anyway. Haven't you any sense of duty? This dame from the juvenile, what you call it, says to me. Duty fooey. You're only young once, I says to her. The Duchess is indisposed. <laughs> Ain't that too bad? <laughs> Thanks, honey. It's nice to be back. Xenia Nielsen. Hello, Pearl. Hi. 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 You've been released on bail. Come on and get your things ready. Your attorney's waiting for you. Yes? Hello, Denny. I just came over... Didn't Hefflin tell you to stay away from me? But, Denny, no one followed me here. The police won't get a line on you if that's what's bothering you. Why should it bother me? Every once in a while, the police act as though they had good sense. I love the police. Now, beat it. And on the way out, remind that dumb guy at the desk that I told him not to let you up here. Hey, what kind of a brush-off is this? Why bother to bail me out? That fancy mouthpiece of yours doesn't work for peanuts. What's the idea? Another girl? Another girl. Oh, that's it. A nice girl, by the name of Button Nose. Remember her? Denny. It's tough for her to live down a mother who'd rather take a chance on jail than to stay with her. Stop it, Denny. I haven't anyone but you. Oh, yes, you have. What about that nice, reliable woman you had to stay with, Martha? The one that knew all about taking care of kids. Why don't you weep on her shoulder? There wasn't any reliable woman. But there was someone. Oh, sure. There was, Denny. She was only a schoolgirl, but I thought she was all right. I never thought she... You thought... said it, you never thought. All you wanted was a good time. The kid didn't even matter. That's a lie, and you know it. And since when have you turned out to be such a sterling character? I guess you used to urge me to sit home nights and listen to the radio. You were on your own. You knew what it was all about. What was I supposed to do, direct you to the nearest YWCA? All of a sudden, you grow up. You fall for a guy instead of his bankroll. You even have a kid. And what do I do? I play along and like it. Not only you, but the kid and the whole setup. Believe it or not, I was beginning to have ideas. Oh, Denny. That's one time, Professor, who's it really slipped up. But the crystal ball is working okay now, and you're not even in the picture. If Heflin gets you off, don't bother to stop by and say thanks. 
I'd tell you to take Heflin someplace and plan him, but... But you have Martha to think about. That's right. Mrs. Nielsen did not say, I want you to be with the baby, did she? I object, Your Honor. Mr. Carr is trying to lead the witness. Objection overruled. You may answer the question. No. I don't remember her asking me to stay. Not that night she didn't. There wasn't a night in which she got in before two in the morning. And you could smell the liquor on her. I'm sure she loved her baby. But... The girl wasn't there that night. As a probation officer, I've never seen a more flagrant case. The child was almost unconscious and the mother was not there. No, she wasn't there. The baby was alone. They're all lying. Ziggy couldn't do the things they say. She's my daughter. They made it sound all wrong. It wasn't like they said. I'm not like they said. Mrs. Nielsen, there is probably no aspect of a judge's work it is more difficult than adjudicating those questions which arise in the relationships within a family, particularly between a mother and her child. This court has always endeavored to preserve those relationships where such a course seems wise and just. However, in the light of the evidence, I am forced to the conclusion that not only have you neglected your child, but that your present mode of life precludes any hope of a normal, healthy environment for her future. Nevertheless, this court has taken into consideration the fact that you are very young, and regrettably enough, you are a war widow. In view of these extenuating circumstances, I sentence you to the county jail for one year, but suspend the sentence and place you on probation for the same period. The child, Martha, will remain a ward of the juvenile court. They said I might see her once in a while. Of course you. But it wouldn't be wise to let her see you, do you think? That window overlooks the play yard. For Mrs. Reagan, and I already wiped my face. Well, glory be to goodness, it's a tree, a whole tree of flowers. <laughs> Guess why? Because it's young and beautiful, I am, to be sure. Ah, go on, you old faker. You know very well it's Mother's Day. <laughs> I never saw anything so fine, Denny. I'd as soon be looking at it as eating my dinner. What's the matter? It's wicked of me to be as happy as a lark when there's so many mothers whose children have. 
That's the worst pain in all the world, Denny, to lose your little one. Well, what is this? I didn't come over here for a good cry. Denny. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom, but all mothers aren't like you. Not by a long shot. You are Ziggy? Sure, I'm Ziggy. I'm Mrs. Reagan, Denny's mother. You mean to tell me Denny's got a real live mother? I thought he came ready made out of a hunk of granite. May I come in? Why not? How did you track me down? The juvenile authorities. What's the idea, snooping for Denny? Or is he just trying to collect attorney's fees? Denny doesn't know I've come here. Then he is very bitter towards you, he is. Then why are you here leaving calling cards? Or is that just an old Irish custom? It was only a short time ago that I thought I had lost a child, too. And I was thinking that maybe praying would help you like it did me. Are you kidding? Then he came back to me, didn't he? I'm sure if you spoke to Father Malloy... That'd make me sleep nights, I guess. Well, thanks just the same, Mom, but so long and goodbye. If you should change your mind. You know, you're kind of nice. Well, it just goes to show you there's nothing in this heredity business after all. Let me know when you're coming again, Mom, and I'll lay in some assorted cakes. Sure, and you talk like Denny talked once. Such big talk.
with a match, if you please. How do you feel this very fine day, Mrs. Regan? Better than good. Good. Would you be having a bit of fruit? Thanks, Mom. Say, I got a surprise for you. It's not after being a tree full of blooms this time, is it? No. But maybe an orange grove. We're going south. We're going? Well, I I'm going along first and... Uh, then you can come after and, and meet me. How's that, Mom? Well, sure, Jenny, if you need me. But why are you leaving San Francisco? Ah, uh, me, I, I like a change. Besides, it'll give you some new things to do. Get some sunshine and fresh air. Not just working over a hot stove all the time. I have plenty of time, Joe. Guess I'll take a last look at the town. Okay, where do we start? You lay the course, Skipper. How about Golden Gate Park? Why Golden Gate Park? Why not? The fellow's got to get some fresh air once in a while, don't he? That's what makes the old pump tick. Yeah, I guess a guy that looks as delicate as you do ought to take care of himself. <laughs> okay, the park. Want me to blow you into a donkey ride? I'm a great guy for that. Oh, goody, goody. Can I ride that itchy bitsy one over there? That one's dynamite, if I remember. And I do. Me too. Need some fresh air once in a while, don't it? That's what makes the old pump tick. A young lady just came in here, a blonde with a baby. Could you tell me who she is? Oh, there was a... What do you want to know for? Well, I, uh, I think she dropped this. I picked it off the street just after she passed. Oh, Mrs. Nelson could never have lost that. I wish the poor child had that kind of money. She deserves it if anybody ever did. Well, suppose I go and ask her. She's in number four, isn't she? If you're that sure it was her drop, that you needn't bother, mister. I'll take it to her. Oh, uh, just a minute. Suppose we talk this over. <laughs> You've been pleased with yourself, aren't you, my fine young man? And a horseman, no less. Well, I suppose next year you'll be riding in the Kentucky Derby. Yes, who is it? Me, darling. Oh, come in, Mrs. Graves. I just wanted to have another look at that pattern magazine you got the other day. I was thinking of running up a stylish stout for myself. Well, I'll get it for you in just a minute. If you're lying to me, you'll be needing some stitches taken in you. Yeah, I know. Oh, Mrs. Graves, you should have seen Denny on the Jenny. <laughs> Denny on the Jenny, it sounds like a corny song title, doesn't it? Ah, oh, but he was too little. I got such a kick out of him. He rode the same donkey that... What kind of material are you going to make it out of, Mrs. Graves? Hi, Angel Eyes. 
Looks like I've walked into a neighborhood of nuts by mistake. They tell me you're the little mother of the world. Devote your entire life to your baby or any other kid that happens to be around. And the only guy that rings the bell is the milkman. And with him, it's strictly to sell a quart of milk. You're certified, you're grade A, you're 100%. Where did you get the kid? You get out of here. He's mine. They can't take him away from me. They can't. Now, take it easy, baby. Take it easy. Sounded almost like Mark then. Go on, Angel Eyes, and keep your chin up. Mrs. Nielsen. A few months ago, you were put on probation for a period of one year. I had hopes that you understood the terms of your probation and that you would do your best to live up to them. But I find that you have taken an infant, admittedly abandoned, and that without notifying the authorities, have kept it in your possession. You realize, Mrs. Nielsen, that that was not the proper course of action. The charges could be brought against you. But I've been very happy and gratified to discover, through this investigation by the juvenile authorities, that you have given the infant in question such excellent care and have reformed your manner of living to such an extent. I don't know why you wouldn't take the taxi. My kids are going to get used to streetcars. No fancy business for them. Crystal ball. 